you guys are already taking us there. Let's consider the next step. Uh, meanwhile, our Lester Munson says if Brady and his unreal legal team decide to sue the league, there will be a series of challenges for the quarterback. More than likely, they will not pan out in Brady's favor. Let's listen to what he had to say earlier on Mike and Mike. I can easily see that Brady and his lawyers may decide to sue the National Football League. I have serious doubts about whether Brady can succeed in such a lawsuit, and I think that Brady and his group should very carefully consider what might happen in the lawsuit. In the Theodore Wells investigation, Brady did not give up his cell phone, he did not give up his emails, he did not give up his text messages. He stonewalled the investigators for the NFL. He will not be able to do that in any lawsuit so that when the NFL defends itself in the lawsuit, it will obtain by court process everything that Brady has refused to give up. So things in the lawsuit could become even more incriminating than they were in the original investigation. And I think Brady and his group should very carefully consider that. Yeah, he said things could become more incriminating for Brady, but it also works the same way for both sides. Obviously, Good. if he tries to sue the league, answer, they'll Kim. have to put some things out yes. as well. Um, all right, so listen, Skip Bayless, your reaction yes. to what Lester Munson has to say. Stephen A. Smith, my reaction, first of all, is that I've known Lester Munson for a long time from my days in you, the town you're in right now, Chi-Town. Lester is brilliant. Lester is a lawyer by trade, and he is a great legal analyst. So I, I always sit and I listen to the whole interview today on Mike and Mike because it's spellbinding and it's illuminating to me. And his whole idea of fraught with peril could be a lawsuit, could be disastrous for Tom Brady and company, I completely respect and acknowledge. He brought up the point, we just talked about it, Tom Brady would have to give up his cell phone and his computer records, blah, blah, blah. We get all that. Those two guys in question, those two ball boys, Jim McNally, John Jastrzemski, could they turn on Tom Brady in court, especially McNally, off the texts that we saw, which were very derisive, aimed back at Tom Brady. Oh, he doesn't like his football, we'll watch, I'll, I'll give him a rugby ball next time. <laughs> Well, could, could that guy turn on Tom Brady and be a very damaging witness against Tom Brady in court? Sure he could. My question to you, Mr. Smith, is this. You don't think that Tom Brady has carefully considered all of the above? The moment he hired Jeffrey Kessler, I said, game on. We talked about him yesterday. Some people in our audience don't know Jeffrey Kessler. I certainly know of him for years and years having covered the NFL. This man is brilliant as a superstar attorney, and he is unyielding. He is a pain in the behind for the National Football League. He has a long history of taking on and often defeating the National Football League. And Stephen A., my case to you is that there's no way that Jeffrey Kessler would have taken this case if he thought he couldn't win it. If he thought he was fighting a losing battle from Jump Street, there's no way Jeffrey Kessler needs this case. But he reviewed the facts. He obviously had a lengthy discussion with one Tom Brady, who convinced him the way he's convinced confidants I've spoken to, 100% innocent, wrongly convicted. And Jeffrey Kessler said, I'll take the case. Again, I'm going to reiterate to you, I'm sure Tom's defense will be, I only said from the start of my career, I like him inflated to the lower end of regulation. That's what they will try to prove. The ultimate target here for a Jeffrey Kessler will be none other than the commissioner of the National Football League. It will come down to Kessler versus Roger Goodell in a court of law. Again, they'll sue to get the proper um, arbitrator in. You know, they'll try to do Harold Henderson, the league man, for the first go around, and they'll sue to get an objective arbitrator, and I don't know who that'll be. Maybe it'll be Paul Tagliabu again for round two. I don't know. But in the end, I think Goodell's job could be on the line here. Certainly his credibility could be back on the line. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, my thought is your point about 
Jeffrey Kessler means absolutely nothing to me. Keep in mind that Jeffrey Kessler historically works for unions, not individual players. And if I remember correctly, I think it's the union who brought Kessler in, not Tom Brady. That's point number one. No, point it, it number was two. Tom Brady's choice. Trust, I know for a fact he, that Tom Brady did his homework and asked around, and everybody said, you got to get Jeffrey Kessler. Well, well, everybody okay. always, everybody, but I'm saying to you, everyone with the union historically says Jeffrey Kessler. And Jeffrey Kessler has never seen a case he doesn't think he can win. That's point number two. Point number three, his targeting Roger Goodell, it's another way, and I'm not knocking the union strategy here, so I don't want it to come across as if I'm sitting there and saying something negative about the union because I have no problem with them whatsoever, and I have no problem with what they're doing. But if this somehow impugns the integrity of Roger Goodell and sort of dissipates his power to some degree. In other words, if through this case, the union somehow, some way is able uh, to, to, to diminish his level of power, ultimately accomplishing something that they couldn't pull off during collective bargaining negotiations, that's just another, you know, uh, uh, another, uh, another point for them. Make no mistake about it. This is not just about Tom Brady. The union loves being involved in this because they got their behinds handed to them by the National Football League during collective bargaining negotiations, as far as I'm concerned. And as a result of that reality, ever since then, they nip and tuck every chance they get to do something to Goodell because they couldn't pull it off during collective bargaining negotiations. This is another maneuver in that direction, as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> Excuse me. But in the end, what it comes down to more importantly than anything else, Skip Bayless, is this. You can always make a legal argument, particularly in cases primarily involving circumstantial evidence. Of course, Tom Brady has a case. Of course, Tom Brady can sit there and get his suspension reduced. Of course, Tom Brady can make a case for himself that he was wrongly convicted uh, by the National Football League, etc., etc. We all know this is coming. But Tom Brady still had ample opportunity beforehand to do this, and he dropped the ball in that regard. And so as a result of it, that's going to contribute to this as well. And keep in mind, the courts historically, historically, Skip, are of the mindset that they are hesitant to get involved on this level with these kind of things because this falls directly under the purview of the National Football League. It was collectively bargained. And when you find yourself in a situation where you're bringing the courts involved, they're ultimately willing to push it right back to the National Football League, ergo Roger Goodell. So when you take it into consideration, anything's possible. You can make a case for in favor of Tom Brady. We can all make a case against Tom Brady. In the end, Tom Brady's goal is to get the suspension reduced, if not flat out eradicated, so he doesn't have to miss any games. I don't believe he'll pull it off. I believe he might pull off a reduction, but not complete eradication. But the one thing I do know is that Half of the football world is going to question your integrity forevermore, and Tom Brady, in part, allowed it to happen. Okay, That's wait a what second. the bottom line I, is. I am completely lost on what you're saying. He had ample opportunity to do what before? To say something publicly? No, well, I'm just talking about in terms of your testimony to the National Football League, the Ted Wells investigation oh. accusing you of not fully cooperating. I, I don't know what his Troy testimony Vincent. was. Well, it's well, not included in the Wells report. Well, well, what happens is the, the, Ted Wells elaborated on what Tom Brady wasn't willing to, in terms of when Tom Brady wasn't willing to show those text messages or, the, or those emails, that resonates, Skip Bayless. It certainly resonated with Troy Vincent, the executive VP of the National Football League, who's on the record questioning whether Tom Brady gave full cooperation. So, again, you're talking about the courts, and I'm saying to you, any time you take something to the courts from a literal and legalese perspective, of course you have a point, Skip, in terms of the suspension ultimately being reduced, if not eradicated. It certainly could happen, although I doubt it will. I think there is a better chance of a reduction as opposed to complete eradication, but it doesn't negate the fact that ultimately the questions that you had about Tom Brady, mm -hmm. the questions that I had about Tom Brady, and others, it may not matter to him now, but it's going to matter even okay. more as this drags so, on. What I'm hearing back from you right here, right now, is that your mind has been completely closed by an investigation for which the NFL paid almost or maybe up to $5 million. No, Skip. 
that concluded it's more probable than not that he generally knew about the underinflated footballs. No, Skip, okay. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying to you is that before an investigation even took place, I came on the air with you right here on this show, and I said to you there is no way in hell that 11 of 12 footballs can be deflated, and Tom Brady didn't know. I told you I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I told you I didn't think it warranted a suspension. Just don't tell me he didn't know. You were saying, no, it's not about him. It's about Bill Belichick. And I was saying, no, it's more Still about Tom that. Brady because he's the quarterback. So my point is I didn't need the Ted Wells investigation to tell me what it told me. I believe from day one that any quarterback knows that the footballs are deflated. Okay. That was my position. And Tom Brady lost me when he tried to act like he didn't know anything. Last point That's where he lost me. Okay, you know where you lose me? Usually, sure. you're so skeptical and suspicious of these reports commissioned by the National I, Football I League. I usually am. Remember the yeah. Mueller report on Ray yeah. Rice concluded yeah. that Roger Goodell, no executive in the NFL office, had any knowledge of the in elevator video. Remember that? That was the conclusion of that report. And I didn't believe report. that for and one second. Like, right. Stop That's it. Right. <laughs> yeah, you Stop paid it. the former FBI director to find yep. that for you, really? Right. Mm -hmm. And we're all laughing at it or scoffing at yep. it. Sure. But now you're taking this one to the bank. I, I don't know. I, I'm a because, little skeptical. Because, because, be, hold on, wait a minute. Because everything that you're saying is predicated on the investigation because you have a problem with this four-game suspension based on just the circumstantial evidence without a smoking gun. The difference between your position and mine, just for clarification, is that I don't need, and I never needed the investigation to convince me that Tom Brady knew about deflated footballs. Now, when it comes to the amount of the suspension, that, that's when I'm influenced by football players who are t who have told me that deflated football gives you an advantage, and okay. it's very, very important. But I have always believed that Tom Brady had to know the footballs were deflated, and to act like you are just an innocent bystander in all of this is utterly ridiculous. I've never needed the Wells investigation to tell me that. All right, we'll pick this up a little later on. Let's leave it right here. Again, Tom Brady suspended for four games. We're talking about the what if he has a deadline to appeal said suspension. 5 p.m. Eastern today. Obviously, we'll keep you posted. What do you think of Tom Brady's image? Uh, it's been tarnished. We want to make sure you get your voice heard as well. Go to the Twitter. Use the hashtag Brady Loses Shine. Vote yes or no, and we'll have the results coming up a little later on in the show. Uh, after the break, we're heading back to Chicago. Obviously, Stephen A is there, but we're talking about the Cavs. They try to close it out tonight on the road, or will Chicago be able to stretch it to seven? The debate on the other side of the break. First take, just getting started. You guys are already taking us there. Let's consider the next step. Uh, meanwhile, our Lester Munson says if Brady and his unreal legal team decide to sue the league, there will be a series of challenges for the quarterback. More than likely, they will not pan out in Brady's favor. Let's listen to what he had to say earlier on Mike and Mike. I can easily see that Brady and his lawyers may decide to sue the National Football League. I have serious doubts about it. carefully consider that. Yeah, he said things could become more incriminating for Brady, but it also works the same way for both sides. Obviously, Good. if he tries to sue the Good league, answer, they'll Kerry. have to put some things out yes. as well. Um, all right, so listen, Skip Bayless, your reaction yes. to what Lester Munson has to say. Stephen A. Smith, my reaction, first of all, is that I've known Lester Munson for a long time from my days in you, the town you're in right now, Chi-Town. Lester is brilliant. Lester is a lawyer by trade, and he is a great legal analyst. So I, I always sit and I listen to the whole interview today on Mike and Mike because it's spellbinding and it's illuminating to me. And his whole idea of fraught with peril could be a lawsuit, could be disastrous for Tom Brady and company, I completely respect and acknowledge. He brought up the point, we just talked about it, Tom Brady would have to give up his cell phone and his computer records, blah, blah, blah. We get all that. Those two guys in question, those two. He will not be able to do that in any lawsuit so that when the NFL defends itself in the lawsuit, it will obtain by court process everything that Brady has refused to give up. So things in the lawsuit could become even more incriminating than they were in the original investigation. And I think Brady and his group should vote whether 
Brady can succeed in such a lawsuit. And I think that Brady and his group should very carefully consider what might happen in the lawsuit. In the Theodore Wells investigation, Brady did not give up his cell phone. He did not give up his emails. He did not give up his text messages. He stonewalled the investigators for the NFL.